Hello viewers, welcome to Drawing Comics, Coloring Conan Part 24. I'm your host, I'm going to be continuing coloring Conan the Barbarian using color pencils. I try to adjust um, the light on here, but it seems to be very bright and uh, covering up detail that I'd like you guys to see. Um, so I'm going to continue inking because it seems like I'm getting way more coloring done on pages um, that don't have any inks on them at all. Um, so yeah, I'm going to just continue inking this panel and this one as well. And I will also um, uh, hopefully have time to do coloring. So just wanted to quickly go over some news. For those of you who are just tuning in, um, you could check out the previous stream. You could also take a look at the uh, past broadcasts on Twitch to see uh, the launch of my Patreon page, as well as schedule changes. So I'm excited about it. I think it has some really cool opportunities for everybody to uh, participate and be part of our lounge in different ways. Um, you'll have like a, a tier that doesn't cost that much, but it is, um, it will help the stream keep going. It's two bucks a month. You get access to the Discord server that pretty much everybody who signs up for from all the different social media platforms will have access to. And uh, you guys can connect, interact with each other, network, share ideas, share thoughts and expression, and pretty much talk about anything under the sun. That is the entire purpose of it. Then uh, we got tier two, which is the all access one. You guys will get access to never before uh, seen content, work that I've done in the past that has never not been posted on Patreon or any of the social media. Um, so you guys will have access to that as well. For that tier, it's five bucks a month. And it'll also come with the previous um, tier benefits as well, like having your name listed at the end. I'm gonna start doing credits as a way to say thank you to you guys uh, for supporting the stream. So you're going to have your name listed in the credits, you're going to have access to the Discord channel, never before seen content, and uh, Patreon-only community. Uh, but yeah, check out that video. It goes into depth pretty much on all of the different tiers that are available. I'm just giving you guys right now a brief overview of it. Um... So after that tier, it's going to be the artist submission tier. So if you are working on something and you want to get some helpful tips on where you can improve, get a live critique. I'm going to do live critiques every Friday as the new schedule change. That's part of the new schedule change uh, for two hours in the evening, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. I'm going to be doing uh, critiques. So you guys... Once you submit to that tier, you will get access to the Discord channel. You could send me anything that you'd like to have critiqued on there, along with your social media platforms, so that way uh, people can check out more of your work and what you're up to. And um, I think it, that'll also help build communities, get you guys familiar with each other on, and Art Lounge in general. Um, you guys will also get a private channel just dedicated for you um, to talk things out, talk about the stream, talk about the critique, talk about things, uh, pretty much anything, really. Um, so you're going to have access to that as well. That and um, access to the general Discord channel, Art Lounge Discord channel, where pretty much everybody gets access to once they pledge to any of those, um, any of the tiers on the Patreon page. So 
along with the benefits from the previous tiers as well, like having your name listed at the end for credits. Um, there's more, but as I mentioned, check out that a previous broadcast and check out the Patreon page. Um, pretty much everything on there is explained as well. And if you guys have any, any questions, um, any comments, um, send them away. Send them in chat. I'll, I'll answer any questions you got about it in chat or through any of the social media platforms if you guys are tuning in later not part of the live stream and I'll write you back or I'll talk about it in the stream um well this is getting kind of gunky I just watched it that's interesting I don't know I think this is uh this is gonna be dicey I don't want to do it in this jar so give me a one second guys I'm gonna go wa wash off this wash off this gunk All right, done and done. Just gotta dry this off real quick. I expect that it's gonna be kind of opaque. Maybe this is like an indication that I need to refill it. I guess we'll see. Usually after washing this brush pen, the first few layers are kind of bloody. Like they bleed more because it's mixed in with water. So it just kind of spreads out like that. A little reminder to anybody else who's working uh, traditionally, and you guys have a lamp, don't raise it over your hand. It's going to cast a shadow and obstruct your vision. I thought, hmm, the page is looking kind of dark. Let me raise this lamp. And while that might solve one problem, it creates another one. So the page might not be dark anymore because you got the light that's directly over. It's distributing the light all through the page properly, right? There isn't spots like, for instance, where you guys are seeing it right now. This is getting so much light. 
whereas the rest of the image is kind of like gradually getting darker. So I thought, okay, let me put it over on top so the light distributes evenly. And what that did was it just created a shadow of my arm onto the paper and it obstructs my vision from seeing what's going on, really. So you get one benefit, but a new problem arises. Come on, brush pen. Don't bleed so much. Could also be because I squeezed to get new um, black ink. Alright, here I'm going to have a chance to really work that out.
kind of curious now to see who was um, who was the anchor of this one. Did Thomas Simon just think his own work here? I mentioned it in previous um, streams. It could have been in the drawing comics stream, but John Buscema was not fond of a lot of anchors, and he thought that when they botched up his work. Take a quick look. See if it's um, somebody else. But usually it was him, I think, or John Bussam, uh, his brother Sal Bussama, who did the inking. Trying to still work out the um, the wetness. Now this panel's pretty good for that. It seems like there's a lot of areas that are um, just solid black. I was also going to see um, who inked this. Uh, 
I'm gonna say it's um, Ampasama. I think he yanked it. Also noticed a little um, missed detail from my coloring. Okay, let's take a look real quick. Uh, all the way in front, I'm guessing. Color script, annotation, and art. Yeah, it doesn't talk about anything about colors. Michael Fleischer, that's the script. Color is George Rosos. rows and for letters. Nope, nothing about inking. So yeah, I'm gonna say that it's him. I still have to come back to this panel. I never drew that panel. This one I've done. Um, and I think pretty much all the other ones are done as well. Did all these. So really it comes down to these two. I never finished those. And also this one. I gotta come back to that panel as well. seeing these are very like um, very specific sort of lines and shading and stuff that I think would be only uh, coming mainly from the artist to notice them and be like I want this tiny little line right here
Damn, I gave I gave Conan bangs. They're a little too big. I'm gonna have to get really focused on this one. And also challenge myself for tiny little details to um the distance from the tip. so good. It looks like I actually worked out the uh, wetness of the brush. The lines aren't, um, aren't bleeding out as much.
true. I remember um, I was wa watching some video talking about John Buscema. I think it might have been Comic Tropes. Pretty sure it might have been Comic Tropes. Um, and Host was mentioning how John Buscema drew horses really well. It's true, actually. I'm looking at it more and more, and like, he really understands the anatomy well of the horse. I'm just studying these, like, um, places where he inks as well. To bring out uh, features of the horse more. I'm not really sure what this shadow right here is. 
present there. Maybe it's like from the tail or something. Just kind of looks like a blob of color. This is the big, big moment right here. Thin lines for the hands. No blobbing. very specific angle of the face. Fortunately, I can't fix that. Things that go into traditional work that um, just proves how much more easy it is. 
um, to do things digitally. Like, for example, you have to think about the lighting, right? We were talking about how moving the lamp over your work is going to cast a shadow and it's going to make it difficult for you to see what's going on. So there's lighting that you have to think about. You also have to think about the kind of paper that you're using. In terms of like the example for watercolor, where watercoloring on the wrong kind of paper is going to produce problems. Um, you have to think about the kind of inks that you're using. Some inks are just not dark. They have like opaque quality to it. They dry up faster or slower. So you really do have to enjoy the process to go with it. Like you have to enjoy all these things. Otherwise you're gonna find yourself to be frustrated more. Um, more than actually enjoying it. I like that stuff, I like learning all that. Uh -huh. All those things that kind of go into it. It just makes it more fun to sit down and draw. And it's challenging, you really pick up all these different tools, you know. You have to get really good at uh, the ruler as well. So all these different tools that you really have to simultaneously get a good understanding of. It's not an easy fit. Well, ladies and gents, I am going to cut the stream here, Coloring Comics. This is going to be the last stream for the week. Unfortunately, I won't be streaming on the weekends for now. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, or if you just, or you missed it, you know, this is you just tuning in later in the stream, check out the past broadcasts and check out... Um, me talking about my Patreon launch. Check out all the different tiers on there. There's some exciting content there that you guys can um, choose from to participate and be part of the live stream, be part of Art Lounge more. Um, and also, I talk about the schedule changes. So I'm still um, going to be streaming daily is just going to be reduced to evenings only where I'm going to alternate the streams. So Mondays I'm going to have uh, figure drawing and figure drawing is going to be present every day. You know, I feel like it's important for people who are learning and if I'm going to have the class um, to really keep up with what's going on and have them have all the lessons be refreshed often as opposed to just once a week. So uh, for example, Mondays it's going to be figure drawing at 8, and then uh, drawing comics at 9. Tuesday is going to be figure drawing at 8, coloring com uh, project at 9. And uh, Wednesday it's going to be figure drawing at 8, coloring comics at 9. And then Thursdays, um, it's either going to go back to um, drawing com um, figure drawing and project stream you know to have the project done twice a week rather than just once or it's going to switch to painting um, Kickstarter patrons so check that out that's the 
Patreon tier. So I might switch on Thursdays to that instead of having figure drawing and uh, the project stream in the evenings. And then Fridays, it's going to be either um, figure drawing at 8 and drawing comics at 9, or it's going to be the critique tier. So once that starts to go, then Fridays for two hours, I'm going to be critiquing uh, submissions. So check that out. That's another tier that's available on Patreon. Uh, thanks for tuning in, y'all. Uh, look through the previous broadcasts to get a better idea of what's going on with Patreon, what's going on with the schedule. And I will see you guys on Monday. Enjoy the weekend.